broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Woodstock, Georgia. It's time for Kid Biz Radio. Kid Biz Radio creates conversations about the power of entrepreneurship and the positive impact that journey can have on kids. For more information, go to kidbizexpo.com. Now, here's your hosts. Hi, welcome to Kid Biz Radio. I'm Layla. And I'm Austin. And today we have awesome guests with us in the studio, Holly with Honey Bee's Honey Bee Events and Heather with Health Guru Heath. Hi, Holly and Heather. Thanks for being with us here today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, for sure. It's nice to be here. Uh, thanks for being with us today. Can you tell us about yourself and a bit about your business? Either one of you is fine. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, well, my name is Holly. I am a Georgia native. I grew up in Kennesaw, Georgia, and then migrated to Woodstock and then to Canton, where I've been for 20 years. I have three kids. My oldest is my only daughter, and her name is Bailey. And then I have two boys, Joshua and Samuel, and Samuel is about to graduate high school, so he's my last and my business is an event planning and design company where I take all of your dreams and make them come true from the smallest detail to the biggest and any event really from personal to corporate. So anything in between, we help take over, lighten the stress and let the client actually be a guest at their own event. Um, I have a question. Where did Honey Bee, if, like how did Honey Bee get in the title? I'm glad that you asked that because not a lot of people do. I normally offer that as free information. So kudos to you for asking. I actually have a little honeybee on my necklace. So when I was growing up, I stayed with my grandmother a lot. And my oldest sister um, could not say her true name, which was Helen. And she made a connection because my grandmother raised bees and robbed their honey. So when we were growing up, her name was Granny Honey, that's what we called her. And since I stayed with her a lot, she just always meant a lot to me. And she passed away about seven years ago. So the name is in homage to her. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, Heather. Um, my name is Heather Winston. I'm actually from California. I was born in Los Angeles and I grew up in Orange County. I moved to Georgia right before high school. Um, so I'm a little Southern fried at this point. Uh, I have three kids as well, a uh, three kid club. Me and Holly, I have two boys and a girl, okay. but my girl is my youngest. Uh, my kids are 16, 11, and nine, Hayden, wow. Zachary, and Olivia. So I've still got a little bit to go. Uh, and uh, I am a health and life insurance broker. So I help people with health insurance, life insurance, uh, group benefits, individuals, families, you name it, I can do it. Anything health and life. So um, my business is Health Guru Heath. A lot of people, like you ladies, think it's Heath, but unfortunately, <laughs> us Heathers, we don't really have a nickname. You know, my mom called me Heath, so I kind of went mm. with the alliteration, you know, health insurance. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's not a me. lot of nicknames for Holly <laughs> right. either. Because exactly. you don't want to shorten it to exactly. yeah, your you first know? two letters. You don't want to be <laughs> oh, known as Ho. <laughs> no, no. No. Okay. <laughs> well, um, Either one of you can start. How did you get started in your business? Like, what was the inspiration? If it kind of just came randomly, what happened? Well, I've always been in the hospitality industry one way or another. My first marriage was restaurant business. And I was a stay-at-home mom, but it always kind of infiltrated my life as far as planning my children's birthday parties, making their birthday cakes, doing my friends' birthday parties. And then when I needed to get um, a full-time job, I went obviously straight back into hospitality because it's natural and it's what I know and started working full-time with caterers. And then through the caterers, I met other event planner companies and made those connections while I was on site and just kind of started making bigger and more connections on purpose with the people that I knew were the, the, the bosses of those companies and it's been probably about 10 years now. So I started with wow. a smaller, um, I would say mom and pop, but she's busy enough to where she had like four or five employees. So I started working with her and working all of the design and the logistics, which I became extremely proficient at. And it's imperative for events because people think you just throw up some banners or balloons mm -hmm. But when you have a lot of moving parts, you have to be well-versed in the logistics part of it, where it, a lot of people coming in and out and the requirements of what that event might be. And from that, 
I went to a bigger company in Atlanta where they were having events literally six, seven days a week and two or three events a day. So this was more of, it was still individually owned, but extremely high end events in Atlanta. And so then I learned kind of the business side from them of how to be big and proficient and COVID hit and that rocked the hospitality industry. So coming back to Canton and after COVID, I had to really think about what I wanted to do. What did I like? What could I really put my efforts into for myself? And that being my background, I just started to do it myself and created the business and really hit the ground running with it. Is it still the logistics part that interests you the most? It does. I think that for me, being creatively minded, the biggest thing for myself is, can I do it? And in order to do it, how you have to sit down and really work through everything from A to Z. Well, how do you do it? Where do you get it from? Can you get it here on time? Is this what the client wants? And does it fit their aesthetic? So the logistics always intrigues me. But the biggest part is being able to bring that dream or that vision that's just in your head or on paper into reality. When you finally get through all the work and there is a lot of work on the back end of a big event, and especially something that's really important to people like retirement parties, engagement parties, um, corporate client appreciation, those are big deals. And when that client sees that end result and knowing that they're happy with it, then it makes that work worth it. That is amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay, Heather. Um, I actually ended up in this field kind of on accident. Um, I went through some major life changes back in 2017. I got divorced and was in corporate America for about eight and a half years and decided I wanted to change everything about my life. So I left my company, my marriage, and put my resume on monster.com and was picked up by, um, you know, a health insurance kind of company and it was a straight commission position and I like to do hard things. So I just (laughs) jumped right in full force and I've made it work. And here we are, uh, you know, six years later, rocking and rolling on with you lovely ladies. So thank you again for having me, but it's been a whirlwind. I enjoy helping folks find solutions. I've kind of built my business off education. Uh, nobody really knows anything about health insurance. That's one thing that I've learned. Uh, and, uh, so I really just used my first couple of years building a referral based business by teaching people for free, you know, whether I could Mm -hmm. help them or not, or earn a paycheck off of it. I always did the right thing, helped them, put them in the right place. And that's really been my biggest reward because I've just built that word of mouth mm-hmm. referral business. So it's, it's great. I really enjoy what I do. And I would imagine trust. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, yeah. being your own boss is key. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's my it's my mom's favorite thing. She doesn't have to listen to anybody. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> my you know, dad I loves have, it. Yeah, I don't have to leave the house if I don't want to. So it's, <laughs> it's pretty nice. Okay. Um, again, either one of you can answer. What have you done that that most contributed to your success as an entrepreneur? Mm, I feel like that's such a loaded question. (laughs) Yeah, we can like break it down in things, but Um, I think one of the first and fundamental things in making mine successful and granted, like I still kind of, while I have the experience as far as it being my own business, I'm still in my mind in the fletchling period, you know, it's not, as big as I want it to be, but it's consistent. But the biggest thing I would say is believing that I could do it. Mm-hmm. If you don't have full fledged, not even a hundred percent, I mean like 200% determination and belief in yourself, you won't even get your foot out the door. So it, that's a constant struggle. Like I said earlier, where I like to be able to figure things out, but in that process, there's always the doubt of, can you, and how do I? Mm -hmm. So it's a constant balance of questioning myself, but telling myself that I can. So for me, that was the first and foremost thing. And then taking a step back and very purposely looking 
that now was in a new demographic. I wasn't in Atlanta anymore where people had money to throw wherever they wanted. In Cherokee and Canton, you have to adjust to the demographic and the mindset. So I had to purposely step back and look at how I did, how can I do that? How can I connect on purpose and with benefit? Because time is money. So I had to make my time worthwhile and really look at how I could connect with the community and get my name out there and give it a sense of worth, but also just like Heather said, educating people because a lot of times for an event planner, people don't think that it's needed until it's too late. I get more phone calls after the fact saying that they wish they would have booked me because of the stress that goes into it for that actual day. So educating people on the worth of it was, um, probably the second hurdle that I feel like I've gotten over now. Um, you said that you feel like it's hard for you to grow anymore. What do you personally think the next step would be to help you do that? Right now it's going to be the word of mouth and references from the people that I already have booked. So I have a wedding this Friday and next weekend I have an event Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So Mm -hmm. It's growing, and which I'm grateful for, but for it to, to go from there, just like Heather said again, it's, it's that word of mouth and people trusting you that you are worth what you say you're worth. And once that's proven, then the word of mouth is the best advertisement you could ever have. Mm-hmm. And that's going to only happen from people truly experiencing you and it turning out the way that, A, you promised – B, that it looks the way they wanted, and C, that their experience was above and beyond what they initially expected because everybody's going to have a retirement party. Everybody's going to have a wedding. Everybody's going to have a baby shower. Everybody's going to have a child graduating, a milestone birthday party, corporate events, Christmas parties, things like that. So it's then, again, those people being able to validate my name yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Piggybacking off what you said, time is money for sure. Referral based uh, business and having belief in yourself. Uh, I had no doubt that I could pull off a straight commission job. I just believed in myself. And going against, uh, you know, United Healthcare, Aetna, mm-hmm. that's a little bit intimidating. So uh, thinking outside the box really helped for me. I jumped on board with the social media train very early. And started humiliating myself online. <laughs> making, like, wow. um, <laughs> I did. I, I started making, uh, very right after COVID, I joined TikTok and started making funny videos, poking fun at American healthcare. And, you know, and it, it worked. Whatever it, it, it takes. took off. It yeah. took off, you know, and uh, just, uh, you know, anything and everything it was health insurance, health insurance, every video, health insurance, health insurance, and branding yourself. And then obviously, you know, delivering the honest, you know, perform as the honest advice, helping people, whether you can make money off them or not, really drove my business to become referral based. And now I just, you know, my phone rings. I don't really have to invest in any outgoing leads. It's all word of mouth. So it's, it's been yeah, awesome. That's really good. It's very cool. Um, um, so you have both become very successful. What would you say you define success as? Um, I, I'm really happy with myself and I'm really, uh, satisfied with my life and where my life is and my relationship with my children, especially, uh, it, you know, being a you know, product of divorce, I guess, uh, it took some time to heal from that and, uh, just, the value that I've built in myself by making a straight commission job work work and the, uh, you know, the reviews, the feedback that I've gotten from people has really made me proud of myself. So I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know Holly, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I would agree. Um, for me, success is um, freedom. And in freedom that comes not just with finances, but with time. So being able to give myself the time that I deserve to accomplish the things in my life that I want. And when you go through a lot of 
life changes and growing up and coming out the other side of a lot of places that you never expected to be in becoming an adult, um, really defining who you want to be and how you want to be and how you want to do it and being able to do it, obviously, ethically, but to walk those guidelines and really walk your own drum, the only your true beat. You know what I mean? Like when they say everybody hears a different drummer, obviously we're all individuals, but to be able to live that out, that is success to me. And that time that we cannot get back, it's the only commodity that is not replaceable. And to be able to, again, not only give myself that time to try to set out the accomplishments that I have defined in my life, but also to have that time to give to my family because my family is my biggest reward and I don't want to waste it giving to an employer that a won't appreciate me or that I'm breaking my back for and sacrificing time with my kids even if it's dinner or going to a movies or whatever I want to be able to have that flexibility and that time to say yeah I can do that if I want to I can rearrange these things if I want to that's success to me um my mom Whenever she was working in like her like office job or whatever, once she quit, even though she was working, she f- still felt more present at home just because she would be able to like watch the movie with us. Right. Even though if she was like working on a logo or whatever, she was right. able to be there yeah. and not be at work. Physically nice. present. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And like yeah. becoming an entrepreneur affects so many other people besides just the entrepreneur themselves, it affects their family and their friends as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the other side of that too, like being able to, to do this and step out on my own, knowing that I could is also showing my children that success to me, like leaving some type of a legacy for them to be able to look at, not just financially, because honestly anybody can make money, Mm -hmm. but it's a legacy that I'm going to leave my kids that they can look at me and know that was it hard? Yes. Was it doable? Yes. Yeah. I think if you do anything just based off money, it's not going to be as rewarding as doing what you love. Yeah. You know, any advice that I could do what you love, find yeah. something that you love and learn how to make money off of it. Yeah. Cause money comes and goes. Mine comes I've had and a goes. Lot and I've <laughs> had none. Yeah. If you're not happy with yourself, then you've got nothing to exactly. teach anyone else. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to the next section. <laughs> All right. Um, so what are some maybe possible regrets that you have had while starting up your business? Like thinking something like, oh, I probably could have done this differently or I could have done this better while starting up your business. Oh, lots of those early <laughs> videos that I made. <laughs> I had to go back in private. A lot of those videos, I didn't know how to do my makeup or about lighting. Uh, so, yeah, those will be hidden in a vault. You know that means that we're going to have to go follow you now. Have to go find <laughs> those videos. I privated them all. I, was, I, was, I privated them uh, after a while. But, you know, uh, fail forward. It's, it fail forward. You know, yeah, it's, it got it's, you where you needed to I go. I have embarrassed myself fully out there so now like nothing can hurt me yeah Yeah. (laughs) i would say for me my only well i probably have a lot of regrets (laughs) but as far as my business is concerned the main one that i would say is not starting sooner Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um because i my personality i have a loyal personality and i have honestly uh work till i die work ethic Mm -hmm. And my word is the only thing that I have. And if I give it to you, then I will die fulfilling it. And I was doing that for other people. And that's where I was saying time is success to me and and freedom. Um, Because, again, I was investing in someone else's livelihood, someone else's dream. And while I honored that commitment, um, I wish that I would have started for myself sooner. Um, It's not funny to say that, but I feel like until the past few years, it was kind of like crazy or weird to start a business. But now it's so like, oh, my goodness, it's become good very for you. normal. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like you guys started a while ago. Did people like make fun of you and all that oh. stuff? Or like just oh. say that you'd like, oh, you're <laughs> not going to make you're it. Crazy. Or just, <laughs> um, 
I don't know if you've experienced this, Holly, but when you start doing what's best for yourself, uh, a lot of people tend to have an issue with it, especially mm-hmm. people that you know. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of the who does she think she is. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's, yeah. you know, my rule of thumb is how people treat you as a reflection of themselves. You yeah. know, you're a mirror. And if you invest in yourself, you know, the, the, the people that are going to come with you, surround yourself with people that support you, that love you, that really want to see you succeed and all the rest of them will just weed out yeah you know? i didn't get um critiqued too much i think more of the of the feedback was from my own mother who of course still worries even though i'm a grown woman but it's <laughs> yeah. just part of motherhood you know because she wanted me to go get a a steady job uh, a reliable job something that i could bank it on was it risky yeah she wanted me to like go work at a bank. If she said that once, she said it a thousand times, like, you know, they've got good hours. They're off on holiday. I was like, I, I understand what that means. It's not what I want to do. If I went and worked behind a desk for six hours a day, I would shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> like it to me, that's not my personality. I, I just am. It would be, I know I would be miserable. Mm-hmm. I, I, to, to me, I have, I'm sure adult ADD, like <laughs> it wasn't a thing, you know, when we were growing up, but it fits my job mm-hmm. because I have to finish so many different tasks at different times. And I've got, you know, six different clients at any given time. And I have to be up creating something. I have a creative personality. So while I could appreciate my mother's angst, I knew once again, I had to walk to my own drum and had to be willing to take that risk. So I didn't really get the critiques really other than from kind of cold shoulders from people actually that I worked with before. So the mom and pop that I worked with out in Roswell, um, while she had earned her keep in a spot in the industry, it was more like she was the only one that she thought could do it well, like kind of who do you think you are or kind of wanting to take the badge that she taught me everything. And then the higher end um, business that I worked with kind of has looked down their nose at me laughing of like, because I obviously compared to them, I am small. So I was kind of surprised at more of a response like that coming from them in a professional setting and especially as adults. But outside of that, if anything, it's more my friends want me to do their events for free. (laughs) So there's no criticism from them. It's like, hey, can you come over here and help? Can you come over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think being neurodivergent is a superpower, uh, in my opinion. You can really use it to your advantage. Oh, absolutely. Uh, You know, strong sense of justice is a, you know, I think everybody should have a strong sense of justice, not just neurodivergent people, but I use it to my uh, benefit and and as a superpower. I don't look at it as a disability. Right. Yeah. It's it's sparked my creativity. It's helped me succeed. Uh, I thrive on being different. Oh, 100%. I have been since I was in elementary (laughs) school. Same. I've never looked back. I've never had a problem standing on my own two feet, speaking my own mind. Yep. (laughs) And I don't go through a room or through life trying to cause destructive waves. I'm just trying to make my own waves. I'm not trying to take anybody down. I Actually, the other side of that is I'm trying to take as many small businesses with me as possible, and especially women-owned businesses. Yes. So Always. Yes. I'm my own worst competitor. Like, no one else is competition to me more than I am myself. Yeah, I always say that. The only person you should be in competition with is the person you were yesterday. Right. That's mm-hmm. it. That's mm-hmm. it. So based on what you have told us, what would you, like, give – uh, what advice would you give for aspiring entrepreneurs to help maybe prevent some of the things that you regret, whether it's not starting sooner or some funny videos or, <laughs> um, oh gosh, uh, I don't know. do what you love. Like I mentioned before, do what you love, believe in yourself, you know, yeah. believe in yourself. Uh, it, nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's coming. You got to have that faith in yourself that it's going to work out. Everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, don't get too high on the highs and don't get too low on the lows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're consistent, if anything. Yeah. Yes. For me, I would say if I was talking to a younger version of myself, 
that instead of just having a pipe dream, having an idea, at some point you really have to sit down and put it to paper. At some point you really have to look at, can I do this? What am I interested in? Is there a niche in it that's not being fulfilled? What's a need in even in that industry or want that I might be able to fulfill outside of the generalities? You know, even in my um, industry, there are niches, you know, of what might be fulfilled as a need. But I would say to really sit down and put it to paper. And then those next steps, like I had said earlier, of really planning out, okay, well, what does that mean? Who do you need to connect with? What's the first step that you need to do? Is it an LLC? Is it your tax bracket? What does that mean? Making a logo, your, a business account, you know, what are those steps? And because those are the big ones that you need to get over. But then the day to day, you know, what does that look like? How are you making those connections? And be willing to burn the midnight oil until yeah. it comes to oh, fruition yes. because there is no perfect <laughs> scenario. At one point, I was working three jobs and still oh. trying to get my business off the ground. And sometimes that means going to bed at one o'clock in the morning, but you have to determine how much is it worth to me? That's the biggest thing I would say. What is it worth and what are you willing to do for it? Um, in CBC this morning, the, it's a networking group. Um, the main topic was like, even if people are further along than you, or if the market's already full, as long as you find a problem and stick to it, you have a place and it's not like you're not worthy, even if people are like higher up or more successful than Correct. you. Correct. Yeah. That's that niche. Mm-hmm. And don't be too hard on yourself. That's what I would tell my younger self. I, I was so self-critical. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and don't be too hard on yourself. Give yourself a break. Yes. You know? Give yourself a break. Yeah, because I think I would have to say that one of the things that I kept thinking that besides COVID pushing me, you know, it was a blessing and a curse because it forced me to do what I had been thinking and what it came down to is me telling myself if you can do this for other people in events that are you know hundred thousand dollar events corporate events if you can do this for them why can't you do it for you yeah I agree that's powerful it's very powerful (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, we've talked a lot about the past and the present. Why don't we talk about the future? What are your future goals, wishes, like ideas? Where just do you anything? want your business to go within maybe the next few years, I'd say? Um, where I would like for it to go is for me to be, regardless of how big it gets, but consistent enough to have enough consistent events to where – I can actually employ someone like I used to be with that small mom and pop. Mm -hmm. I would like to be able to employ someone full time because I'm kind of in that limbo right now. I'm I'm small, but I'm so busy that I'm literally (laughs) swamped, but I'm not busy enough to where I can afford someone else's livelihood. And I don't take that lightly. So where I would like to be is that consistency and be able to have someone on staff full time and really start growing this thing and knocking it out of the park and being the go to name, not just in Cherokee County, but then even outside of that as an event planner, not just for weddings, mm-hmm. for the for the other three hundred and sixty four <laughs> days mm-hmm. a year. Yeah, for any event. And again being that trusted name that anybody can turn to and trust with executing the event that they want. So I would like to be able to employ another young lady. Mm -hmm. I think it just kind of fits our personalities. Not that I won't hire a man, but (laughs) right now my day of staff that helps me, they're all female. It just kind of goes hand in hand. And to be able to somehow inspire them like along the way, whether they want to learn this industry or even if they want to learn how to be an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. that I would like to be able to positively and directly impact a younger female generation. Well, you're inspiring me, Holly. Yeah. Yes. Very, you. <laughs> very inspiring. Uh-huh. Um, uh, for me, financially secure. Uh, my oldest will be graduating high school in the next couple of years, and I have struggled 
in the past. And what I would love to give to my kids is the choice to, if they don't want to work, they don't have to. I want to set them up financially so they don't ever have to struggle like I have. And as far as my work goals, my business goals, you know, AT&T, Coca-Cola, you know, what's going on? I do group benefits. You know, where you at? Uh, Any school system in the local area, I can help with anything. Got no skin in the game. So that's really just, uh, you know, breaking down the doors. And I'm all about the female empowerment. Yeah, Uh, always. mm -hmm. I don't really can see how I could employ somebody. I mean, I really... You know, if I nail Coca-Cola, that's, I'm yeah. done. I'm yeah. Go buy my Good island right and we are out. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll see a whole different TikTok. <laughs> yes, we will. Exactly. No more uh, I'll be out in the Maldives in one of those little <laughs> huts know, or whatever. Hut, the huts, yeah. the, you know, uh, although I am kind of deathly afraid of the ocean. Oh, that might not play a good part. But, <laughs> you know, uh, I'll stay up on the shore and just, you know, uh, yeah. you know or be Admire on the boat. Admire it from afar. Exactly, yes, exactly. So. So forewarning, we are going to ask two sort of deeper questions, and then we're going to do a quick this or that. Um, like very speedy. Very speed mm-hmm. round Go. questions. Got um, it. But we are going to start with, if you had the attention of the world for five minutes, everybody was listening, they were all paying attention to you, what would you say? You can take a minute. Wow. <laughs> that might take a second. Uh that we need to seriously address the issue of human trafficking. Mm. Uh, and we seriously need to address the issues of what's going on in our country and within our own government and to, you know, power the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm all about saving the babies. I have a side hustle that I do where I make my own stone beaded bracelets, jewelry. Those. They're very pretty. Thank you. Um, it's called helpandchildtrafficking.com. Not a shameless plug oh, here, but, uh, you know, <laughs> save the babies, man. Save the babies. That's, mm-hmm. that's my biggest yes, deal. Yes, always. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole world. Yep. Um, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is um, urging people to get their house in order. So for me, that is a couple of things. First, your faith, because we don't live forever. And coming to the reality of um, who you trust to really save your life, not on just this earth, but in the one to come, that men have their house in order and teaching their family the way that they should be taught that their children know something when they leave their house instead of being dependent. They are independent benefits to society and being a role model model that's worth following, you know, outside of the finances and everything else. So I would think, yeah, have your house in order and um, spiritually, then financially and just be somebody of worth. If you say something, mean it. And if you mean it, then do it. Your integrity is, uh, is everything. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is agreed. very inspirational. That is, I love that. Okay. Um, if you woke up tomorrow, I'm going to change this question a little bit. If you woke up tomorrow without your business, what would you, what would you be your, what would be your first steps to recovery and who are you without it? I mean, I'm still me. Uh, I show love no matter what. I just want to be a positive light. There's a lot of mm-hmm. negativity in the world. Uh, so I, I do a lot on social media, and I just try and put positive mm-hmm. out there. And you know, I guess I do kind of have a backup plan, but I just believe in myself so much. I don't see myself failing. Yeah, to be honest. Um, If I woke up without my business tomorrow, then I would just start something else. You wouldn't try to rebuild it? If that wasn't an option, like if I lost it beyond recognition for some reason, um, rebuilding is always a factor. But if in hypotheticals that I just lost it to where there is no coming back, Mm -hmm. then I would just start something else. I mean, I've... uh, goes back to what you said of like, I'll work till the day I die. You'll just keep on working. Yeah, I mean, it's not an option. And like I said, anybody can make money. I mean, Mm -hmm. the reality is as much as people complain about this country, it's the freest country that you have the opportunity to be whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to put your effort and your muscle behind your words, then there's nothing really that you can't do. 
It's just, again, doing something that's on purpose and be willing to sacrifice in order to achieve it. So if I woke up without it, I would still be me because I've woken up literally with nothing before. And there would just be something else. I would just basically say, what's next? Yeah, I agree. There's two kinds of people in this world. People make excuses and people that don't. Mm -hmm. That's it. You just... Yeah. Make it happen. Uh, I'm not the same person I was five years ago. Yeah. I've made such huge transformations in my life, and I don't even recognize who I used to be. Anyone yeah, can do anything. You. Mm-hmm. Anyone can do anything. You just got to believe in yourself. Right. So I really believe that. Yeah. Okay, it, ending on a happier note. Other than that, <laughs> we're going to do this or that now. It's like it's just a quick speed round questions. questions. Okay. Um, just a few simple this or that questions. Um, who wants to go first? Go ahead, Holly. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Cats or dogs? Oh, dogs. Spider-Man or Batman? Batman. Books or movies? Movies. Waffle or curly fries? Mount- Waffle. Mountains or beach? Mm, that's always a 50-50 for mm-hmm. me, but I'd probably end up at the beach. Sweet or salty? Salty. Chocolate or <laughs> Like my personality. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, chocolate or fruity candy? Chocolate. Cake or pie? What's that? Cake or pie? Cheesecake? Agreed. Yes. Yeah. You're correct. <laughs> um, l- low or high rise jeans? Um, low. I have on low right now. <laughs> comedy or horror movies? Oh my God, comedy. <laughs> All right, your turn. Okay, let's do it. All right. Okay, cats or dogs? Cats. I'm Spire. sorry, cats. <laughs> <laughs> I will always cats. choose dogs. Cats. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't have time for dogs, man. I like them, uh, yeah. uh, but I'm that crazy full. cat lady that's living in the woods, you know, by myself. So, <laughs> yeah. Spider Man or Batman? Uh, Spider Man. Uh, books or movies? Books. Waffle or curly fries? Waffles. Mountains or the beach? Beach. Sweet or salty? Sweet. Uh, chocolate or fruity chocolate, candy? Chocolate. Chocolate all the way. <laughs> always. Cake or pie? Uh. Both, anything sweet, anything. <laughs> I feel you on that one. Uh, low or high rise jeans? Uh, low rise, man. Low rise for sure. Comedy or horror movies? Horror, horror all day. Love yes, thank you. Horror. Oh, yes. I love horror. <laughs> Opposite horror. I know. Yeah, yeah I know. everything I know. was opposite. I know. But, Love me a good horror movie. Yes, me too. Uh, no way, man. I hate going to bed. Like, <laughs> oh, no, scared. I love like, it. I want, I'm like, ready to fight somebody. Yeah. I will love no comedy way. movies, but I I will never turn down a horror movie. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> There's some good ones that have there come really out are. this no year. Way, some good ones. I just watched X the other day, which is pretty good. I oh, watch the, it so the, bad. It was Shin good. Ortega or something? Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Shit. Mm-hmm. All right, that, she, that sucks for her, man, in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was great. Uh, Mia Goth, I like her a lot. Yeah. She's awesome. So I actually Looking... did an English presentation on her one time. Did you? Wow. She is my new fave. I love. Her. I can't wait for that new one that she's got coming out with Halsey. So it looks no good. way. I totally started. To buy my, <laughs> I don't even listen to the the beginning intro music. I really? d- totally wow. expect somebody to be in my oh. bedroom behind the door, and then like we're on a kung fu fight. Yeah. Yeah. I have traumatized uh-uh. my children. Yes. <laughs> my mother has done the same. Uh-uh. I personally look forward to the new uh, screen movie that they just came out with that I have not seen yet. Yeah. I cannot wait for it. Oh my, my 11 year old is dad. My his dad took him to see it. So <laughs> see, I'm my looking forward to me. the John wick. That's what I'm going to go look at. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch. I'm, like I'm all about that action. I'm like, yes, I should have been CIA. Maybe nice. I like being able to just, I don't even know. We all about 15 guns and <laughs> yeah, just right. smashing people in the face. That we can get along yeah. with. We yeah. can totally Dressing vibe black with that every day. Yes. Walking into the club, like what? women in black yeah the two h's <laughs> yes yes that's awesome i love it okay <laughs> sorry well thank you holly and heather for hanging out with us today uh we really appreciate it um can you tell us um wh- a little bit about how everyone can get in touch with you and check out what you're doing sure um i'm on social media just like every living being um i'm <laughs> yeah. on facebook for the older people <laughs> apparently <laughs> i'm on instagram and tiktok for the younger crowd so it's um honeybee events and you'll know that you have the right person if you see my logo which is an outline of um a honeycomb mm-hmm. Very cool. nice. uh and for me health guru Heather on everything it's short for heather 
It's not Heath, guys. Um, you <laughs> got know. it. Uh, uh Facebook for the older people, uh, LinkedIn for the business folks, Instagram for the people Everything. that are a little bit younger than me, and then TikTok where I embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But yeah, Health Guru Hub on everything. Well, fantastic. We really enjoyed our time with you today, and uh, we know our audience will get much out of hearing your story. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody.